I have no idea what public perception for this video is going to be. I want to start this video by saying I used to be a big fan of iDubs. Back in the day, he and H3H3 were some of the best creators on the platform. He was the guy that pretty much everybody in the commentary space looked up to and respected, but since the OnlyFans acceptance speech, he's almost lost all of that respect and credibility. Unfortunately, it looks like you either die based and red-pilled or live long enough to become the cuck. Before I get into his response to why he finally explains banning Froggy Fresh from Creator Clash 2, I want to give you guys a bit of a timeline of events here so that you better understand the entire situation. As anybody who is a fan of iDubs knows, he began to switch up his content recently and started creating documentaries on various internet personalities. Sam High for those of you who don't know is not very easily explained in just a few words but to put it simply he's a very controversial figure he had his own adult swim show called world peace that was quickly canceled and some might say that after this he became a bit irrelevant although recently on YouTube he has been doing quite well and this is when Ian comes in somewhere in 2021 when he films a documentary on Sam Hyde and his crew Sam Hyde being the controversial guy he is pretty much trolls Ian the entire time from laying dead wasps all over the office space that they rented, to constantly playing copyrighted music, to having all sorts of ways to try to gaslight Ian from having a woman that he said was his girlfriend that was clearly mentally deranged and pretending to be on drugs. All of these things were going on when Ian was trying to make a serious documentary about Sam. And like I said, the reason that he did this is because he believed that Idubs was coming out there to basically do an expose on them and show that he had just fallen off and was washed up. So he thought it would be funny to kind of mess with Ian, but Ian Ian was really not happy with this and he actually never released the documentary. Now, about a year later in January of 2022, Sam Hyde releases his cut of the documentary. A lot of people were really big fans of this documentary but had a lot of questions as to Idub's intentions and what exactly his side of the story was and so finally in February 2022, Idub's released his version of the documentary. It's clear that Idub's was trying to make him look bad, washed up, and even confronts him about copyright striking a video from many years ago and Sam is still nice after that. He even says that he appreciates iDubs for posting the video and giving them attention. He tells Ian that he's somebody that he likes and he really doesn't want static with him and he apologizes for what he did in the past with copyright striking his video and tries to make amends for it. What did I do? Do you have any guesses? Did I say fuck you or something? Uh, no, you, you copyright claim the video. Really? Yes. And then... You sent me an email. That might not have been me. Oh, you okay. Don't think I, sent, so? I sent you an email. It, it kind of seems like something that you would do. I mean, I don't. Do, I don't do most copyright claims. What? Did, what was? What was the email? The email was, "I will release the copyright claim on your video if you can send me a video of yourself squatting 200 pounds below parallel." Why didn't you do that? You'd be so much stronger now if you'd done that. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Did I create an enemy with that? I mean, for for a period. Damn, I didn't like you. I'm sorry. You were an asshole. I'm sorry, buddy. That's that's no good. Yeah. Why'd you do that to me? Uh, I don't know. I, I can't even remember what you, the, what your video was. So maybe I, I was pissed off or something. I don't yeah. know. I was trying to I was trying to not have that ruse get blown though. Right. So maybe that had something to do with it. <laughs> Probably did. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't remember that. Yeah. Damn. That's what led. To this day, today. Really? Okay. Yeah. So are you trying to? Are you gonna punk me? <laughs> You're getting punked. Really? How are you gonna? How are you gonna punk me? I'm gonna make you look like a like an asshole. Really? Which isn't hard to do. Is that is that the, really the case? No. Okay. Uh, it's meant to be. Uh, well, I mean, part of me feels like you might be being disingenuous by saying you don't remember. I legit don't remember. Hundred percent serious. Really? Yeah. You just like is it is it because you're you know doing so much that you just sort of forget all the bridges you burn and all the like people you fuck with? Did I ever burn a bridge with that? I could have been, but yeah, I'm I'm a resilient person, so I I turned that hate into a passion for filmmaking, which okay. is why I'm here. Okay. Yeah. So are you are you like still angry with me? No, 
Definitely not. Although Sam was essentially just messing with Ian the entire time and kind of ruining his documentary, I feel like you can see some genuine moments where they were both interacting and, and having fun spending time together. I don't think the entire thing was negative, and that's what's really unfortunate because after this, this is where things really start to go downhill. In one of these sections of Sam Hyde's documentary with iDubs, he brings him to a random underpass and boxes with him. Some might say that this is actually what inspired him to create Creator Clash. Creator Clash's iDubs boxing event where he brings a bunch of random YouTubers together to go box each other. Creator Clash is set for May 14th, 2022. One of the fighters who was in Creator Clash 1 is Harley Mornstein from Epic Mealtime. Sam actually made a joke about fighting the guy from Epic Mealtime on a burger or something like that, and this is where their history began. Harley decides that he is going to Rhode Island to train boxing with Sam Hyde. Harley makes a documentary on the whole situation. It seems like they have a great time and Sam trades him for his upcoming fight. Harley then goes on to win his fight which was a huge W for the Rhode Island boys. Sam then buys multiple front row tickets and spends around $14,000 to have front row tickets for him and all of his crew. The day of the event, iDubs bans Sam from the event without warning and basically plan to have him show up with all of his crew and not be able to get in. As you can see in this Instagram post from Sam here, to clarify, I bought five front row tickets and found out a few hours before the event that I was banned. So out 11.5k. Also security was walking around with pictures of my face, bothering some people about wearing my shirts, and the cameramen were told to avoid entire sections of the crowd rocking my shiz. LOL. So as you can see here, a start of the conflict really was through iDubs essentially banning Sam and all of his crew from the entire event and tried to set this up so that he would have came day of the event, spent all this money and at the doors not be let in, which is a pretty shitty thing to do, you gotta admit. So essentially up until this point, iDubs really has caused most of the beef. Sam had not done anything yet. In their interview, he literally says, I don't want static with people that I like. This is the point where Sam started to make jokes about his wife, calling her a succubus, etc. because clearly she's kind of the one pulling the strings here, making the decisions. Over the last year since the first creator clash, Sam has been admittedly extremely ruthless for with the shit that he has said about Anissa from the Joma stretching fund to calling her a succubus and Yoko Ona, all of this shit. It is pretty extreme. He has said some wild shit and you know, you can't expect much less from the guy like Sam Hyde. He's a pretty wild guy. He's very edgy and has no filter. But as I've now shown, there was no issue really between them after the documentary. Nothing until iDubs planned to have him show up and fuck him over, waste all his money and have all of his crew just stand outside and not be able to get into the event. This is the point where Sam then began saying a bunch of stuff about his wife. Now we fast forward a few months to January when Creator Clash 2 was announced by iDubs. The lineup is announced and it includes Froggy Fresh versus Chris Raygun. A few weeks leading up to the fight, Froggy Fresh decides that he is going to Rhode Island to train with Sam Hyde just like Harley Mornstein did, and this is where the real issues begin to unfold. Within a few weeks leading up to the event, Froggy Fresh is banned completely from the event and taken off the card. Why you ask? At this point it is only speculation. Froggy Fresh was on Twitter having altercations with Anissa's mother. He made a joke about subscribing to Anissa's OnlyFans if he was to lose his boxing match. And of course there is the part about him going to train with Sam Hyde. But as I said at this point there was no clear answer to why Froggy was banned from the event. The official Creator Clash Twitter posted a few tweets saying that they were uncomfortable with having him on the card but never did they exactly explicitly state as to why he was removed from the card. Two Two months later, after Creator Clash ends, Froggy Fresh is removed, and Chris Reagan gets his ass beat by some guy that was much bigger than him that replaced Froggy Fresh, we finally have an answer as to why exactly Froggy Fresh was taken off the card. Now let's go ahead and watch Ian's video and dissect it and see what his true reasoning was for taking Froggy Fresh out of the event. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Brief update, I am healed from Creator Clash 2. Uh, it was a success. Alex Wasabi beat me up. He, you know, he won his fight fair and square, and I have all the respect for Alex. He's a good competitor, and uh, I have respect for all the other fighters on the Creator Clash card. And thank you to all the fans who came. It was an amazing event. I'm very happy. Very happy, very emotional. Awesome experience. I'll never forget it. Having said all that, you guys are here for the juice. 
and the grease. So I'm going to give you guys the grease and the juice. Yeah, you're definitely looking pretty greasy nowadays, Ian. Uh, and that all has to do with Froggy Fresh. The reason I didn't address any of this sooner is because I was terrified of jeopardizing the success of the event because there are a lot more people involved in this than just Anissa and I. Uh, and I didn't want to fuck it up for them. These are people that I really care about and I felt like it would be very selfish if I was like, I understand public perception right now, guys. I'm just gonna make a quick 10 minute video and I'll squash all the rumors, I'll squash all the beef. I have no idea what public perception for this video is going to be. That's why I'm doing it now, right? Is it, The event is now over with. I can, I can risk it, you know? I can air my grievances and we can see where it goes. So essentially he was afraid that if he would have actually explained why they removed Froggy at the time before the event was actually about to happen, that this may have caused some issues. In the grand scheme of things, I really don't think if he would have just explained right then and there why they were removing him from the card, I don't think that would have affected the event. Sure, a couple hundred tickets would have maybe been canceled as probably is what happened, but I seriously doubt that if they would have just explained what happened, it would have had that much of an effect on the event. I think this just would have brought him more respect from the people that were asking why why did they do this i need to bring you guys up to speed on where i'm at as a person and as a content creator my philosophy for a while was well people will figure it out through the videos i make but the problem is the videos i make i mean i sort of avoid speaking from the heart i'm just gonna focus on a thing on a piece of content i'm glad he's being honest here because this is kind of the narrative you're gonna see through the rest of this video idubs is really bad at communicating i, I think i have bad associations with sharing my life uh, on the internet i'm like no that that shouldn't be my thing like leave that up to the vloggers but I think it's important to share where I'm at, so uh, none of what I'm talking about in this Froggy Fresh video feels like I'm being hypocritical or, uh, you know, I'm misleading you in any way. Mmm, we're gonna see that that's not quite the case. I think a lot of the content I've made has been irresponsible and misguided. And I think I've hurt a lot of people with the content I've made, uh, you know, despite many people being entertained by it, you know, I'm not trying to take that away from you. If you feel like you've learned important lessons or you have grown as a person because of the content I've made, I don't want to take that away from you. With some good can come a lot of bad. And I think I've done a lot of bad. And, uh, you know, at the bare minimum, I've just put a lot of negativity out there in the world. And I'm working on not doing that. I can understand the guy wanting to switch up his content and kind of change his perspective on things, although he was bashing Leafy for making fun of people, and then he used him as a stepping stool to then become popular on YouTube himself by bashing people, so that's kind of ironic and hypocritical like he just said he was trying to not be, but yeah. I plan on expanding on all of this in a, a further video. I think there's a lot of content uh, from over the years and some behind the scenes that I'd love to share with you guys. I think it would, it would give clarity to, to where I'm at. But in this video, that's a, probably about all I can say on, on any of it. I don't want to detract from what the focus is. And the focus is kicking Froggy Fresh from the Creator Clash card. All right, so about two months after this all originally happened and six minutes into this video where he was going on about some other random shit, we're finally going to get an actual answer as to why they kicked Froggy out of the boxing event. The main reason Froggy was kicked from the card was for collaborating with Sam Hyde. All right, so our suspicions are finally confirmed. This is the actual reason why he was removed from the event. I don't think many of us are that surprised. And, you know, for anyone who's been following the story, that's, you know, fairly obvious. Uh, Froggy has explained... Uh, you know, his side of the story multiple times. And uh, unfortunately, he's been perpetuating a narrative that it's about OnlyFans or that it's about Anissa's mom. And it, that's extremely deceptive because he knows why he was kicked from the card. All right, but Ian, clearly you did not make it explicitly obvious that if Froggy was to associate with Sam Hyde, that he would be kicked out of the event. I'm pretty sure he would have told everybody why he was kicked out two months ago when this happened, if he actually knew. The one indication I gave him was Sam Hyde, and I, I wasn't unclear about that. Anyone who's mentioning the fact that Harley trained with Sam Hyde for the year previous, uh, that was before Sam was saying this about my wife. I don't think so, Anissa. Bitch. Ho. Fucking Anissa. What an ugly piece of shit. 
But look how, look how beat she is. Oh, nice jack-o'-lantern teeth. That's like a I can't wait to see what she looks like when she's 32. Her teeth look like a like a pumpkin head. Like it's the Anissa Joma hole stretcher. I'm sending this to Anissa's OnlyFans. It goes directly into charity. Yeah. Everybody hates him and his wife's a slut. This was coming from the same guy that uploaded a video that said he was completely okay with guys jacking off to his girlfriend. I can understand his perspective. You know, I'm not going to be like everybody else that is like, oh my God, why are you upset that he's saying this shit about his girlfriend? Sam is going fucking in. He is saying the most ruthless shit. So I understand. I get why you don't like the guy. I get why you would hate him for saying this shit about your wife. He's saying she has fucking jack o' lantern teeth. It's pretty wild. But if you really cared that much, grow some fucking balls and tell Froggy or tell everybody else, make it explicitly clear, hey, if you associate with Sam Hyde, you're getting kicked out of the boxing match. Clearly, he didn't do that. The only thing that Froggy said ever happened was he got a phone call from Ian in the beginning saying, how do you know Sam Hyde? That was it. So yeah, now that this guy is on the daily insulting my wife, I think it's pretty fair to, you know, not want to associate with him in any way. We did ban Sam from the first event, so it's not as if he's confused about where he stands in all this. Uh, I don't like him. And, and Froggy knows that. Froggy knows that I don't like him. Of course, that's why he was banned. You know, none of this is like, news to Froggy. Froggy knew all of this going into it. Yes, that's a fair point. Froggy, I'm sure, did know that Sam Hyde was banned from the first event. He knew that Ian doesn't like him. Still, there was never anything explicitly stating that if he was to associate with him, that he was going to be removed from the event. Now, morally, I could understand why as a friend, if, you know, Froggy was friends with Ian, why he wouldn't associate with him. Clearly, he was trying to stay neutral between both parties. And if Ian actually had a true issue with this, he should have made it explicitly clear if you hang out with him, I'm gonna kick you out. But clearly he did not. He did not do that. For anyone who's under the impression that Froggy has been like reasonable and chill and respectful uh, through this whole process, he hasn't been. He's been a piece of shit. Uh, I'm not happy with how he's behaved. He's talked mad shit about me. Ian doesn't want people who are bigger and more talented than him upstaging him. That's what it is. Anissa. Ian's masculinity had been completely removed via Anissa. Uh, participants of the event. This is really a lot of weird, tender, soft people. <laughs> Creator clash people are real like these type of people. You know what I mean? <laughs> the event itself. This is really like the patty cake league for, for like social uh, media boxing. You know? Uh, he doesn't like the culture of Creator Clash, and he mentioned that. And Chris Reagan and all these people, it's like some big ethot worshiping um, party at these things. And I don't get it. I don't get what all this shit is all about. But everybody's there to worship ethots or fucking ethot or get or like touching ethots, titty or pussy. Or <laughs> to be honest, I thought it was quite the gift to you that we'd kick you off the card. You have no more obligations and you can immediately just pivot into boxing for misfits. The problem with these clips here is he's not making it clear if these were before he kicked him out or after, because obviously if this is after he kicked him out of the event, no shit, he's gonna be talking a bunch of shit about the people involved in the event and whatnot. But even if it wasn't, it really doesn't matter who cares if he's doing that. I don't think he's doing anything that insanely out of line. And if he was, you should let him know. Give him a warning back then, like, hey, you can't be talking about people like this. Let him know, and if he wasn't okay with that, kick him out then but you waited like a week before because of the same hide shit come on man it's like that's the culture that you want you want the the non sissy you want the macho dude traditional boxing culture so go over there and box for them you don't even have to miss that many months of training you you've been training so hop on one of those cards but unfortunately froggy doesn't want to hop on one of those cards because he thinks the uh, skill level is too high personally in my opinion i think the talent at misfits and happy punches in a different league that is out of my league. Amazing. I mean, hey, you gotta give Wings and Boogie some fucking respect for actually getting into the ring. Hopefully it actually happens. That's gonna be good. And then right here is down. You stop. I mean, come on. It goes, it turns quickly from boxing to assault. Just fight someone who's weaker than you. So I'm not, I'm done with boxing. I can fulfill my current obligations. If for some reason Creator Class changed their mind, I could fulfill my current obligations. I'm not interested in further going further into any other boxing. It's just, it's such a fucking cop out that you're like, all right, I'm such a victim for getting kicked off the Creator Clash event when I knew what would get me kicked off the Creator Clash event. And now you're like, I don't want to box anymore. 
I mean, Ian, just like you're upset that people are making fun of your wife and supporting the Joma stretching fund, I'm sure he was upset that he worked nine months and prepared for a boxing match that he was then a week before let go from. And no, he didn't know why. You never fucking made it explicitly clear. If you would have just said, this is going to get you kicked out. If you do this, this, and this, let him know, hey, associate with Sam Hyde, you're gone. But he didn't. He didn't do that. He was too much of a bitch to actually just say what the fuck was going to happen if he did that. It's like, come on. If you look at my text exchange with Froggy, it's very clear that I didn't want to kick him from the card. Yeah, so he just fucking flew by with those without actually getting into them. So let's go ahead and take a second to read these text messages. Hey dude, I just want to clarify that I'm not mad at you. I just want this event to go well. And part of that is trying to be proactive about things. I just want to find a solution. Really appreciate your friendship and don't want to feel like I've upset you. That is, you know, very cordial of Ian. That's nice of him to come off like that. So yeah, that's cool. I don't understand what's wrong. Can I not work with Sam Hyde? He's been very nice to me. Also reasonable. It's just been a tricky situation. I personally have been hurt by a lot of things he's done. Wow, this sounds very soy. Anyway, if he is your friend, that's totally understandable. I just don't get along with him and I am afraid of having him associated with the event. Reasonable. There are others involved in the event that also aren't comfortable with, and then it just kind of stops there. Yeah, he's my friend. I don't understand what me going to Rhode Island to work with Sam has to do with anyone who is uncomfortable with him. They don't have to see or work with him. That makes sense. I agree. Privately, what you do is absolutely only your business, but because we are running a public charity event, we have to be careful about these things because you do represent the event in some ways. I had similar issues last year. I thought, no problem, Harley, you can work with Sam Hyde, but it ended up attracting a bad crowd and I got harassed online about it a lot because it was a public display. That's nice of you to give Harley permission to work with Sam Hyde. I didn't know I needed your permission as well. This is way back before any of these things happened. Idubs never explicitly said, hey, you don't have permission to hang out with him, you're going to get in trouble if you do this. It's not about permission. He just called and asked if I was cool with it because he was making content around it. So what are we actually discussing right now? If I work with Sam Hyde, are you going to prevent me from fighting in the event? He actively makes content about wanting my marriage to end, that my wife is evil and hasn't respected my boundaries. I don't feel comfortable having him associated with the event, and I'm wondering if you can understand where I'm coming from. So he's kind of beating around the bush like, hey, dude, I really don't like him. Can you please not associate with him? Instead of being clear about what he actually wants. I can understand the way you feel. I'm sorry about that. But you also have to understand that he is my friend. So I can't just tell him I can't be friends with him because Ian said so. That's why I'm asking you, if I work with him, are you going to prevent me from fighting in Creator Clash 2? Froggy is trying to get an explicitly clear answer here, as you can see. It's not a reflection on you. It's just a very painful and difficult thing for me that I'm dealing with with that I need to keep distance from that includes this project. Oh my god, Ian. Jesus Christ, what happened to you, man? I would just appreciate a yes or no answer, man. I'm trying to figure out if I'm going to boxing practice tomorrow or not. So clearly Froggy's just trying to get a fucking answer and he's just continues to beat around the bush. It kind of depends on what your plan is because Sam Hyde is banned from our event. If you want him to be there, we cannot accommodate that. Okay, that's reasonable. He knows that. My plan is to go to Rhode Island to hang out with him. So again, I ask, if I go work with him, are you going to prevent me from fighting in Creator Clash 2? I would appreciate a yes or no answer. I have to talk to my coach about practice this week. Wait, I'm not sure I understand. Does that mean you aren't expecting him to be at the event? Are you going to make content together? He has not mentioned attending the event. I don't believe he intends to do so. I have not discussed this with him. I do intend to make content with him. Now that I've answered your questions, would you be respectful enough to answer mine? So for Froggy's being really cordial here. This is probably the most professional I've seen him act in, in all of this. So, you know, good on him for being like this. This event is really important to me and I'm just trying to understand everything so I can make the best decision for everyone involved. I need time to think about this. I don't want to be rash. Oh my God, Ian, who's got your balls in a vice, brother? Just answer this fucking question. So I'm going to schedule practice this week, not knowing whether or not you're allowing me to fight in the event because I'm going to hang out with someone you don't like. Okay, you got to respect for 
Froggy for just sticking to his fucking morals and being a man. And Ian, God, this is really pathetic. I don't understand why you're talking to me like this. I'm not trying to be a jerk. I explained to you the awful experience I've had with him. It potentially leads to another year of harassment for me and Anissa. I can't take this stuff lightly. Can you guarantee that it's not going to end up affecting? Can't read the rest. This isn't just someone I don't like. This is someone who is dedicated to disrupting an event where running for charity, harassing its two main organizers, and sending his fan base to do his bidding. I want you to fight. I just want you to know the pain he's caused me and Anissa in our event. Holy fuck. Dude, because you're trying to tell me who I can and can't be friends with, I'm going to Rhode Island to work with Sam, and I'm scheduling my practices for this week. If I'm being removed from the event, please let me know. How many times have you counted? Froggy Fresh has said. I think about three or four times he said, am I going to be removed from the event if I associate with Sam Hyde? When did Ian make it explicitly fucking clear? And he's showing his own text messages here. When did he make it explicitly clear? Hey, if you hang out with Sam Hyde, I'm kicking you out. He doesn't. He beats around the bush about it. He's like, Sam hurt my feelings and I would appreciate it if you don't associate with him. He even says he can be friends with him. He never says if you hang out with him, I'm kicking you out. I never said you couldn't be friends with him. I would just prefer if you waited till after the event to post content with him. That's reasonable. That's the first thing he's asked him to do. Yeah, that's weird. I'm not the type of person that you can just make do whatever you want or what is convenient for you. I have a life and a family. You're not going to change my mind. I'm going to work with him. I'm trying to cook dinner for my kids. Sounds like your personal problems are interfering with your business. It wasn't my intention to dictate things to you. I just wanted to give you my personal perspective because we haven't talked about this topic before. Ultimately, it is your decision. I'm sorry the convo went in this direction. Okay, I'll fight. Thanks. He never explicitly says you can't associate with him. He even says, ultimately, it is your decision. If you hang out with him, please don't post content with him before the event. That's it. That's the only thing that he clearly stated. He never said he can't hang out with him. So we got that answer. So this is going to lead into Ian now being extremely hypocritical and just spewing out more bullshit. I got to the point where I was like, okay, I don't want you working or training with Sam Hyde, but you're doing that. So, all right, I'll look past it. I don't want you making content with Sam Hyde, but it seems like that's a real deal breaker for you, so I guess I'll look past it. It came to the point where I was like, can you postpone releasing content with Sam Hyde? Look, you know me and Sam don't get along. You know, I'm, we put a lot of time and energy in this creator cr clash thing. I don't want it to be about Sam Hyde, so just don't let it hurt the event, all right? Go train with him, have fun but don't let it hurt the event. Don't make it about Sam Hyde. That's what I would have said to you if I was iDubs. Right, and guess what? Like, I would, I'd even plan on releasing none of the Sam Hyde content until after the event. If you don't know who Sam Hyde is, he's, whether or not you love him or hate him, you have to recognize him as, uh, he's the most talented comedian alive. He's the most talented comedian of our generation. He's gonna probably be the greatest comedian of all time. He's insanely, he's a genius. Um, I got a chance to go out there and train with him. He welcomed me into his environment. He paid people to train me. I would, I'd even plan on releasing none of the Sam Hyde content until after the event. Didn't you tell them that? I thought you no, told no, them that. Ian, you were... Ian, no, Ian requested it through text. He requested that I did that. What I didn't like, I didn't like that he requested that because that's not, I don't think that's appropriate. I was like. So he uses this clip of Froggy here where he says he didn't plan to release any content with Sam until after the event. But that really doesn't matter because in this text message that you show, you are the owner of the event and you say, I would prefer that you don't make content with him, but ultimately it's up to you. Froggy doesn't say, yeah, I won't do it. He never said that. He didn't think it was appropriate. I do not think that that is appropriate. Do you think it's appropriate that, uh, I don't know, a 30-something-year-old man is publicly calling my wife a whore and a slut? I think initially you can just buy the, you can buy that. Yeah. Yeah. And this has got a separate Etsy page where she sells her pussy. Yoko Ono was too concussed to fight in Creator Clash for the second year in a row. Life is so easy for uh, a certain gender. All you have to do is say that my uterus hurts. What'd she say this time? Her uterus hurts? Her I uterus think fell she out? had another concussion. Probably your uterus fell out from getting blown out so much by uh, toys. Is that appropriate, Froggy? Do you think that's appropriate? I don't think that's appropriate. Okay, you don't think it's appropriate that I, I set boundaries. Ian, you are the owner of this entire event. Tell this motherfucker, bro, do not post content with Sam Hyde. You're going to be kicked out. Do not go hang out with him or you're going to be kicked out. All he had to do was answer his questions. Froggy was cordial. He asked him questions multiple times, like four times. He never answered him directly. I don't think it's appropriate that you are hanging out with a guy who doesn't think women are people. 
Like, I don't think that's appropriate. I was like, I don't think you should be telling me when or when or when I can't release content. Like, this is my career. It's what I do for but a living. But you complied like, with it, right? But, but I was going to anyways, but I didn't like people telling me that. I thought that was out of line. I don't know why he's saying that he was planning on waiting to post Sam Hyde content. We have the Twitter timeline of him nonstop posting Sam Hyde content. It's fucking weird. I don't know if he thought it was like a loophole to post on Twitter about Sam Hyde. So I think in his head, he was like, I, I was gonna wait to post Sam Hyde content, parentheses, YouTube video. What happened to you, brother? What has happened to you? Yoko Ono has completely infected your mind. You took her last name. You grew your greasy hair out. You got these terrible tattoos. You became a complete fucking beta male. What has happened to you? Do you think it's appropriate that my feelings are being hurt? Bro, fucking man up for yourself. Got Have some respect. You don't have to be some type of ultra masculine man to just have some fucking respect for yourself. This is just pathetic. Like, cause like, it's not my problem that you have personal, that you have personal beef with the greatest comedian in the world. If I go to Providence- How am I the simp? How am I the simp? I want to know. Is it because it's a woman? It's because it's a woman, isn't it? It's okay to simp for a big gross dude. It's okay. It's understandable. He's big and he's gross. As, as soon as you simp for someone who's uh, literally your partner, your life partner, that's too much. That's kind of gay. The problem is, just like Froggy said in the beginning, this comes down to personal issues Ian has with Sam Hyde. He never said you can't post content with Sam Hyde before the fight. So this point he's making is stupid. It doesn't matter. You never said he couldn't post it in the first place. You're just going off of morally he said he didn't plan to do it. You know, sure, morally he did say, hey, I don't plan to post content. And he did. That's true. But you never explicitly said he couldn't. So you getting upset that he did is just your own personal issue. If I go to Providence, Rhode Island and get an opportunity to when I to work with him, that should be my option to when I release that content. And it's got nothing to do with you. Not everything that people do with Sam Hyde involves IDOVs. And I think that he misinterprets that. We're not talking about people. We're talking about what you do with Sam Hyde because you're in my event. I wish there were many layers of separation so I really could be that disconnected. Unfortunately, I have to be around you. You have to fight at my event. Uh, I have to share the same uh, space as you, you know, in the parties, at the event itself, and I don't want to do that. I have no interest in sharing that space with you. So for, for him to tell me, hey, could you wait until after the event to release that? In my mind, I'm thinking, I mean, I could, but it's weird for you to tell me to do that because it's got nothing to do with you. Yeah, Froggy is being extremely dick righty here, I'm not gonna lie. I get it, you like Sam Hyde. I like Sam Hyde, but come on, man. It's a bit much, you gotta agree with Ian there. He shows a little bit of his OG humor sometimes in this video, and it makes me miss him. I miss his old content, and I, I agree with him. Froggy's being a bit much here. Another thing that contributed to Froggy getting kicked was that he tweeted at Nathan Barnett, aka Dad, he said, Dude, I tried hyping you up at Denny's when we ate dinner, and they said they weren't fucking with you and that you were going to lose to AB. They don't even like you. This is one of those things where it was like, oh, okay, so you basically don't have any good intentions here. You are just like, uh, you, don't li you don't like us. Like, I'm not here to play with people and give them warnings. Like, we're all adults on the card. I'm not gonna give you a warning. Actually, no, I will give you a warning if you, I think you have good intentions. The problem is when you tweet shit out like this and you have the text message exchange that Froggy had with me, I don't think you have good intentions. You're like trying to like ruin a relationship between me and one of my friends. This is just a pointless section here. We've already gone over the fact that he said he didn't want him to upload content with Sam before the event, and then he did, but he never explicitly said that he couldn't. So it just, it really doesn't matter. Once again, this is kind of just a personal issue Ian's having here with what Froggy's doing, and I understand he's trying to keep the show going, keep shit together, but he could have just given him a warning. I don't see why he's saying, we're all adults here, I don't have to give anybody warnings. I mean, you are the head of the event, you're saying yourself you need to keep shit together, so just give the guy a warning. Tell him he can't be doing stuff like this. Froggy deleted that tweet, and I don't think he deleted it because he felt differently. I think he deleted it because uh, he knew that it could potentially get him kicked from the event, and uh, would also make him look like an asshole, but he basically reiterated that same thing in a Twitter space. When I was at fucking Denny's, I was all like telling them, yo, dad's a fucking savage. And they're all like, no, no, dad doesn't, 
Dad doesn't spar with high level fucking competition. He's gonna lose to AB, and I'm thinking these Wait, motherfuckers are. Wait, so who like, said oh. that? Who said that? Ian and Anissa, like that's the way these motherfuckers are, and then they got dad like riding for them. They don't even, and if like I wouldn't be like this, but if everybody's gonna keep calling me out, like I'm the fucking person that's fucking fucking shit up, like that dad's out here riding for them. They're all like they don't even fucking give a fuck about him. And in the same Twitter space where Froggy says this, Sam Hyde, Froggy's hero, calls Nathan a rapist like several times. That Nathan Barnett guy, I guarantee you that guy would rape somebody if he had if he had the opportunity. Yeah, and legally, he, he would rape somebody in Minecraft, by the way. In, in Minecraft. Minecraft. Yes. <laughs> he, he, if he had the chance to rape a woman, he would. In Minecraft. In Minecraft. No, not in, no, not in Minecraft, team. Well, just like you're asking all of us to do and accept the fact that you've changed and you're changing your morals and you go back on things, you know, maybe he decided, hey, I shouldn't have done that. And this is after the fact where you kicked him out of the event. So, yeah, why not? Why is he not allowed to say, hey, they were talking shit about this guy at dinner? And then, yeah, the part with what Sam's saying is just, that's Sam for you, you know? Like, what are you going to say? That's a fair point, you know, he's admitting that he's bad at communicating, but still, she also doesn't make it clear that he's not allowed to associate with Sam Hyde or give him any kind of warning. I don't want anything to do with Sam, I don't want anything to do with people that think what Sam is doing is okay. It is not okay. Here's part of the Twitter space where Harley is uh, sort of questioning Tyler with why he wouldn't, uh, you know, respond to Anissa. And I think that's a very valid question because you ask any of our fighters and it's like, yeah, Anissa was the one who like solves problems. She is more communicative than me and she she's better at communicating than I am. I fucking suck at this shit. Uh, so Anissa is the one. She is the one to talk to. Listen, I like Carly. I used to watch Epic Meal Time. They were dope back in the day. But with this whole situation, he's being pretty hypocritical. He himself went and hung out with Sam Hyde and filmed a documentary, clearly to get some more notoriety and get a little bit bigger a name for himself because he's really lost a lot of his relevancy. At this point, he's known for managing his team really shitty at Epic Meal Time. And like I said, he's become kind of irrelevant. So this whole situation just feels kind of weird. I see it from a point of view where I feel like he's He's really going above and beyond to defend Idubs and Anissa to, you know, kind of try to get on their good side a bit, try to get some more relevancy for himself. You know, I could be wrong. He could just be doing this out of, you know, at a good heart and character, but it's just, it's kind of weird how much he gets into it. Like, you know, he's personally offended for them. How was I even supposed to know Ian and Anissa were mad when I get one call from Justin Tracy, then a text message, I respond to it immediately, say, could you communicate through text or email? I'm training. And then nothing else. I don't. I What's didn't. I, I, I still don't even know. What I mean, What's the last text you sent to Nisa? I, it was probably some group yeah, message. From okay. Three what was the last text you ago. said to Anissa? Just you two. I don't have one direct text from Anissa. I have never a group chat you. with with an, an, my wife and Anissa. There's a group oh, chat. Your wife I did not have any oh, direct. So sorry. Contact. Okay. Did anyone ever text you and your wife? What was the last thing Anissa sent you and your wife to you and your wife's phone? What was the last thing? Tense moments in the Twitter space as Froggy goes to see. It's, hey, Tyler, I'm not with Ian. I'm home visiting family. Ian called me not feeling great, and I'm just trying to understand what's happening or how I can help. What's the date? Sunday, March 12th. You don't want to, you don't want to respond to that? No, because oh, you don't know oh, the context so want, of that. You, want, you don't have the context. Harley, let me give you the context. Off the Twitter account instead of responding to that. Very serious and Harley, sympathetic text I, that was nowhere near threatening or aggressive. It's true that Froggy Fresh probably should have responded to her at this point. Still, they're just kind of checking up on him, and that's good. That's that's good of them to do that. But still, at no point did they say he couldn't associate with Sam Hyde or made it clear that that was the issue. Froggy wasn't able to give context for why he didn't respond to Anissa's call and text message uh, in the Twitter space. Uh, Harley ended up leaving, the conversation went elsewhere. So he uploaded a Twitter video to explain the context for why he didn't respond to Anissa. Anissa's last text, which was checking on me. Anissa's concern text of hope everything's going okay was a way for her to try to manipulate the situation, to try to do further investigation into my friendship with Sam Hyde. That was not an are you okay text, that was a, Ian is not able to break your shell. 
maybe a vague concerned manipulative text from me will be able to. I don't really think that this text was meant to be manipulative. I think that she genuinely was probably like, okay, Ian's not able to figure this out. He's not manning up and I'm the one that wears the pants here. So I'm going to fucking text him and say, Hey, how can I help? I don't even know exactly what's going on. What can I do to help? I don't see why that's manipulative. She probably was genuinely trying to see how she could solve the situation and solve the problem that they were having. But I dubs, if you would have just manned up and, and, you know, dealt with this himself instead of making his fucking woman do it the problem would have been solved a long time ago and this is the whole issue here this happens with a lot of things just miscommunication really is the whole theme of this whole video he thinks this text message is manipulation no froggy we wanted to solve the problem let me just say anisa is just trying to exist you know she doesn't want anything to do with the drama she doesn't want anything to do with this shit and i have brought a lot of it into her life and I take responsibility for that. But unfortunately, a lot of people who uh, think that I've changed or call me a cuck or whatever, they, they've decided in, instead of saying that I've changed and that I'm the, the decider of my future, it's that Anissa has changed me. So she has been the target of a lot of hate. And I think it's really shitty. And hearing Tyler talk about her in this way is just a reminder where it's like, Anissa's trying to manipulate you? What the fuck was I doing? Was I trying to manipulate you as well? Like, you should probably come out and say that uh, because it, it seems really fucking sexist and, and creepy for you to be saying these things. I don't know where he's going with this, where it's, it's sexist and, and creepy. There's just a lot of miscommunication going on here. Clearly, Ian didn't know how to deal with it, so he's having his fucking wife text him. If he would have just dealt with this in the first place, it would have been solved a long time ago. It's such a fucked situation. You know what I feel? I'm gonna be honest with you, and I really, I really didn't buy none of this at the beginning until I like, till I was living in it. I kept always hearing people saying like. Anissa ruined items, Anissa ruined items. And I was always like, nah, whatever, like they can work out their problems. And I was never buying into that bullshit. But I swear to God, when like, once you live an event, it's like, okay, I think Ian met the wrong person. I honestly think it's just like, I think sometimes you bond with the wrong person, it can take you to make the wrong decisions maybe. When I met my wife, I'm gonna be honest with you, like I met my wife, I got better the more time I spent with her because she like was honestly a better person than me. But I feel like, Dude, honestly, it seems like so. When Ian, is, as soon as he starts messing with Anissa, it's like Ian goes from the person who would be dogging people, who would sue people, to then like his event that he's running is suing people. It's like a complete flip. By the way, we weren't suing Froggy. Uh, we have no interest in going to court over fifteen thousand uh, dollars. We wanted that fifteen thousand dollars back, but you know he wasn't giving it to us, so. We, we have to leave it at that. You know, we're not suing him. Oh, uh, well, he wouldn't give me my money back, so I guess we're just not gonna get it. I mean, bro, it's pretty fair that he doesn't want to pay you $15,000 when he worked up to this event for nine months to fight in your fucking boxing event, and then a week before, after this terrible communication, not giving him any actual explanation for reasons why he could be kicked out, you fucking kick him out, and then you basically threaten to use legal action if he doesn't pay you $15,000. I could understand why he's like fuck you i'm not paying you back so if they wanted to they could have sued him but i guess they decided not to froggy if you're let back on it's not like you're gonna make another only fans joke about anisa right like no i mean like if they if they make me sign a contract that i can't then i won't you know i i find it so strange because it's like you know that was a joke that was a joke obviously i wouldn't do any more only fans it's just, it's just I don't think Froggy respects sex workers. I think he has some really old, tired opinions about people who do sex work. I think he has uh, a lot of weird opinions as well about masculinity and shit. Ian's masculinity had been completely removed via Anissa. A lot of it's not explicitly said, but when you listen to the jokes, it's like, oh, that that's actually just your opinion phrased in a comedic way. I can understand changing your opinion on things and, and growing as a person, but this is just cringe, bro. Like, when did you just really get into sex work? This is where people say that she's Yoko Ono, she's poisoning his mind, because the iDubs of just a few years ago was saying things like women are whores that do things like this and, and whatnot, so, and, and saying a lot of crazy shit. But, you know, I understand he's changed, but this is why people are saying that she has changed you. When did you all of a sudden become so okay with sex work that you are personally offended? It's strange to me. I don't know about you guys, but I find that pretty fucking weird, so. There was some type of nerd fight last year. 
and Chris Reagan and all these people. It's like some big ethot worship and party at these things. And I don't get it. I don't get what all this shit is all about. But everybody's there to worship ethots or fucking ethot or get or like touching ethots, titty or pussy. Or, <laughs> it's always after that. And it's just like, what happens if people get all excited about it? And I think Chris Reagan was like, he probably thought he was gonna go there and beat some fucking nerd up, and be, and he was gonna win. Like I don't know if they're giving. I think they give away like OnlyFans with girls there at these <laughs> events. I don't know what kind of sponsorships. What I'm, like if you win certain fights, I think you get to own some of these girls for some of the nights. <laughs> awesome. I don't know how it works, but I think Chris was like, like he had plans to go beat up a nerd and like, and like whatever, however, whatever they get to like lease one of these girls. And um, so like, he got there. Well, Ian was probably thinking like, because I think I think, um, man, I need to just stop all, all this probably. No, Froggy, keep going. I think you should keep going. I think the women of the world need to hear your opinions on these things. I still don't know where this interview came from. I can't tell if it was before or after, but I'm pretty sure it's after because he's saying Chris thought he was going to go there and beat up some nerd. So the way he's phrasing it, I feel like this is after. So once again, these are things that he's saying after you kicked him out of the event. So you are using past tense points of him being upset with you to use that as a reason why you kicked him out. That's just, that's fucking such bullshit, man. That is very hypocritical. Like you said in the beginning, you weren't going to be hypocritical and then you're using things that he did after you already kicked him out as a reason why you kicked him out. It's fucking dumb. Talk more about how uh, uh, sex workers are property. That's a funny joke. It was it was super funny the third time that you referred to women as property. That was the that was the funniest one. Because when you said lease, I was like, yeah, I know what a lease is. I don't know. I thought it was pretty funny. He's talking about leasing your thoughts out. It's just it's kind of stupid. I thought it was funny. Even if you didn't do any of the Sam Hyde stuff, why would we want you at our event? Like, if you're just going to blatantly disrespect sex workers and women and, and other fighters saying that they're here to, to touch e-thoughts, like, it is so disrespectful and shitty. I don't want to share the space with you. Once again, I can't confirm this. I don't know where that interview came from, but I'm pretty fucking certain it came from after you kicked him out. So you're using that as a reason why you wouldn't want him at the event. You know, he's kind of using this as like, okay, this is the kind of person he is. Why would I want him there? You should have fucking evaluated that before you said, hey, sign this contract. You're going to be in my fight. You're going to come down and we're going to meet. We're going to we're going to go to dinner and all this. You should have looked more into his character and him as a person and decided that many times you could have given him a reason as to why he's going to be kicked out you know just have some communication with the guy grow some fucking balls stop letting your woman do all the work for you and then just using these points of things that he did after he kicked him out is fucking ridiculous i i don't want other people to be uncomfortable because you're there like you you don't get the vibe all right the vibe is sex workers and fighting i guess and you don't like the sex workers part. I don't think Froggy is doing Sam Hyde's dirty work by, uh, you know, shit talking Anissa. I think it's just pretty clear that he holds similar opinions to Sam Hyde and similar opinions to Sam Hyde fans, which is like, you're just gonna repeat the shit that, you're, that your hero is saying. You have to ditch. Yoko Ono. Drop Yoko Ono, bro. It's gotta be over. <laughs> it's gotta be over. Yo, shout out to that Sam Hyde fan, aka Turkey Tom. And leave the girl, ditch the girl. I think Ian met the wrong person. I honestly think it's just like, I think sometimes you bond with the wrong person, it can take you to make the wrong decisions. She's probably a succubus that's like sucking the life out of him. Sad to see you didn't make the card again. When will iDubs break free from that succubus that is holding him back? Ian's masculinity has been completely removed via Anissa. Anissa's concern text of hope everything's going okay was a way for her to try to manipulate the situation. I think initially you can just buy the, you can buy that. Yeah. I'm sending this to Anissa's OnlyFans. It goes directly into charity. Yeah. Her anal bead package came out and it's, it was $100 for to look at pictures of her with anal beads. I think they give away like OnlyFans with girls there. Like you get to own some of these girls. They get to like lease one of these girls. So Ian really embarrassed himself. And so he didn't want Sam at his event because Ian doesn't want people who are bigger and more talented than him upstaging him. That's what it is. Sam saying that you can buy one of those referring to Anissa is, is crazy. But yeah, Froggy does kind of dick ride a little too much. I will say that. I like the guy, but saying that Idubs doesn't want somebody more talented than him and that Sam is the greatest comedian of all time is a bit much. Tyler is like repeating all of these narratives about how uh, I've changed for the worst. Uh, the person responsible for my uh, my change in a bad way is Anissa, 
Anissa is a, a manipulative person. I like how you can see he almost said succubus there. He kind of caught himself and said manipulative person. But yeah, let's take a look here. So this is Ian back in the day making his old videos. Yeah, he was a nerdy looking white boy wearing his glasses, looking pretty goofy. Now, when I saw this photo of him with the mullet and these fucking god awful tattoos, I thought it was ironic. I thought this was a joke. You know, I thought it was kind of like a costume he was putting on. And then I found out those tattoos are real. That fucking big ass eagle tattoo on his chest is real. The rest of his tattoos are real. And huh, who has similar looking tattoos? Yeah, she does. She has very similar tattoos. So he kind of got the same tattoos. He took her last name. Do you guys know anybody who took their wife's last name? Yeah, I don't know about that, brother. And just the way he's acting overall and th with the fucking mullet, it's pretty obvious that she has changed you and helped aid in whatever kind of transformation you have had where you really are supporting sex workers and you're getting fucking horrible tattoos and I mean was part of the contract in your marriage to have your fucking nuts removed bro it's, it's obvious why people are, are saying these things it's not like he's the only one oh yeah that I I'm like concerned about getting upstaged by Sam or people who are more talented than me which is insane to me because I've put on this event twice me as the uh the main fight and I've lost both times that's pretty upstaged as a side note uh, Sam Hyde has made it a habit to uh, try to sound like a reasonable person by saying, if Ian and Anissa just asked, I'll, I'll stop harassing them. Yeah, if Ian ever hit me up and was like, hey man, I just can you leave me alone? I would just, I'd, fuck it, I would stop talking about him. Whatever, I don't care that much. If you ask me to stop, I'll stop. Like, uh, which on its face is already an insane thing to say. Of course, no one wants to be harassed. If they let Froggy back on the card, I'll sh I won't, I won't tweet at Ian or, uh, in this ever again, I'll fucking, I'll shut up forever. How about that? I get to bring back someone on the card who doesn't respect me, my wife, other fighters. And in return, I have the chance of not being harassed by Sam Hyde. Oh man, how can I refuse that? Yeah, I think he should consider himself very lucky that the ancient vampire Lord Gormedius would consider stopping harassing him. Just so we're on the same page in case I have to make a future video. You heard what Sam Hyde said. If he's a respectable guy, he's not gonna continue to harass me because he says, by his own admission, he doesn't care that much. I don't care that much. This is my request. I would like you to not harass me or my wife or uh, anyone that we're friends with. I mean, hey, this is a fair request. Sam has stated multiple times that he would stop harassing them if Ian ever just asked him. However, he's using clips that were from months and months ago. The creator clash was, uh, let's see, almost a fucking year ago when he originally started having issues with Sam. So I don't know. You know, he, he could really own up to it and stop harassing Ian now that he's asked him not to. But I feel like at this point, it's gone on for so long with him not just fucking communicating and saying, hey, can you stop harassing us? I don't know. It'd be pretty fun if he continues to but it's a win-win situation for Sam he can kind of look good either way so we'll see what happens also harassment encompasses all the little loopholes all right you can't just then like refer to me as a goblin and be like I didn't say his name I wasn't talking about him I was talking about a goblin uh, that's not that's not acceptable another thing I want to make clear is that the decision to kick froggy from the card isn't just for like me and Anissa's comfort uh, there are a lot of people who don't want anything to do with Sam Hyde who are fighting on our card. There are a lot of people who are our fans who want nothing to do with Sam Hyde. So we're trying to protect them. We're trying to protect the environment that we're in, and we want it to be comfortable for everyone. I don't know about you guys, but I've been watching Ian since way back in the day when he was doing bad unboxing and, and Kickstarter crap and he was an edgy guy. I don't really believe that his current fans are those OG fans that got him to where he is today. Without us, without his old school fans, he would be completely irrelevant. Nobody would know who the fuck he is. So after kicking down the ladder, disowning all of his old fans, he's got these new age fans, similar to what H3H3 has, where he has podcasts with people that he used to explore expose and say we're terrible people. I don't understand it. So him saying that his current fans, people on the boxing card don't like Sam Hyde, you know, that may be true, but it's just, it's strange to me. I really don't believe that any of these fans he currently has are anybody that really supported him and brought him to where he is today because none of those people would be offended by this type of shit. Sure, you know, fans of Ian would be upset with Sam Hyde making fun of him and his wife, but anybody that was fans of his old school edgy content, I think that they are 
someone like myself who's lost a lot of respect for Ian, honestly. I truly believe if we had Froggy participate through the rest of the event, it would have made the event worse, like noticeably worse, because we are all trying to work together to make the show as good as possible. And I think if Froggy doesn't fuck with what we got going on, he was gonna make it difficult. One way or another, it was gonna be difficult. In closing, uh, I wanna say that Creator Clash is probably the single best thing that I've ever done in my life. Uh, it has you know, brought so much joy to me and Anissa. It has brought the most awesome people that I've ever met. It's brought them into my life and I'm super grateful and I wanna keep doing it. And this event means so much to me and I'm gonna protect it and I'm gonna protect the fighters and the people involved in, in the event. And uh, you know, I'm not, when it comes to people wanting to fuck around and uh, mess with the vibes, uh, I'm not gonna tolerate it. You know, you're gonna get kicked from the card if you're being a piece of shit and uh, if you're not communicating and if you're not cooperating. The guy that said, I'm gonna try to not be a hypocrite has been a fucking hypocrite as you've seen the entire video. He's saying that Froggy was not communicating. Who said we counted four fucking times? Are you gonna kick me out? Are you gonna kick me out? Are you gonna kick me out? Um, I would prefer that you don't go train with him. He never gave him a fucking straight answer. Like, just be a fucking man, bro. You, like you said, you own the event. I'm not gonna fuck around and, and let people uh be mean to my wife and do da da da. Just tell him, hey, don't do this or you're getting kicked out and then trying to say that he was the one not communicating is literally the most hypocritical shit that you could have said that's about it for the video i'm not even going to play the rest of it it's just him going on about this but let me know what you guys think it's really unfortunate i i am saddened by the current state that idub is in i give him props the guy is successful he's doing a great job with creator clash is clearly doing well they are supporting charity that's awesome it, it saddens me just to see that the state that he's in as a man he can continue to do what he wants support sex workers you know stay with yoko ono that is up to him that's ultimately his decision just like he said to froggy that's totally fine happy for the guy glad things are going well for him but i'm just sad to see the state that he's in just as a person where he can't appropriately communicate or give definitive answers to somebody asking him questions or just leaving shit up to his wife i would recommend to not just him but anybody if you're not able to communicate with somebody and you have to have somebody else do it for you that's a problem so hopefully he can man up and just just, just as a person, not even saying man up, as a just a person, bro, work on your communication skills in the future. If he has issues with other fighters in the future, this shit's probably going to happen again where somebody has some miscommunication and he kicks him out over some fucking bullshit. So anyway, you guys let me know what you think of this whole situation. Are you a soy boy beta cuck who thinks that Ian is in the right here and that he's done nothing wrong? Or are you super based and red pilled and do you agree that this is just super hypocritical and fucking bullshit? Obviously, I'm joking. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I know this is a long ass video if you watch the entire thing i really appreciate it drop a like on it if you did enjoy and subscribe for more videos like this peace